Good morning. Before we get started, do you remember the last three memory verses? Psalms chapter 103, verse 12. He has removed our sins as far from us as the east is from the west. Philippians chapter 4, verse 12. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. In Psalms chapter 37, verse 5. Commit everything you do to the Lord. Trust Him and He will help you. As you listen to today's Bible story, Moses, from prince to shepherd, Think about these questions. Number one, how did we know Moses did not forget his people while he lived in the king's palace? Number two, what wrong did Moses do when he tried to help one of his people? Number three, why did Moses flee from Egypt? Number four, what work did Moses do in the land of Midian? And number five, how many years did Moses spend in that country? Moses, from prince to shepherd. When the boy Moses grew to manhood, he did not forget his own people, the Israelites. Whenever he left the beautiful palace, he saw his people being mistreated by their taskmakers. What could Moses do? In his heart, he believed God had saved his life as a baby so he could help his people. How he longed for that time to come. He despised the riches of Egypt when he saw the hardships and poverty of the Israelites. He despised the Egyptian worship of the sun and the Nile River. One day, when Moses was with the Israelites, he did wrong. As he came to one place, he saw an Egyptian beating an Israelite. How angry Moses was. He had seen Egyptians beating poor Israelites too often. Moses could stand it no longer. He killed the Egyptian and buried him in the sand. Surely the Israelite understood that Moses was trying to help him. The next day, Moses saw two Israelites quarrel and began to fight. Stepping between them, he said, why are you so unkind to each other? One answered crossly, Who made you ruler and a judge over us? Do you intend to kill me as you killed the Egyptian yesterday? When Moses heard this, he was afraid. Didn't his people know how much he loved them and how he longed to help? Now Pharaoh would want to kill him. He must find a place to hide. Perhaps he will be safe in the wilderness. After a long, tiresome journey across the desert, Moses came to a well. Here he sat down to rest. Soon seven young sisters came to draw water for their father's flock. As they watered the sheep, other shepherds came and tried to drive the sheep away. This had happened many times before, but this time Moses was there to help the sisters. When the sisters returned home with the flocks, their father asked, Why are you home so early today? They replied, We met a stranger at the well. He helped us when the men tried to drive our sheep away. But where is the stranger? Their father asked. Why didn't you bring him with you? Go and invite him to eat with us. When Moses came, the father said, I am Jethro, the priest of Midian. These are my daughters. As they talked, Jethro invited Moses to live among his people and to care for his flocks. Later, one of Jethro's daughters became Moses' wife. For 40 years, Moses worked as a shepherd in the land of Midian. Because he was a stranger among the people of Midian, Moses named his first son Gershon, which means a stranger here. Changes were taking place in Egypt. The old Pharaoh had died and a new Pharaoh ruled. Daily he oppressed the Israelites and made life even harder and more miserable for them. Their hearts grew heavy. 
They groan beneath their heavy burdens. In anguish, they cried to God, and he heard their prayers. Now, let's answer the questions from earlier. Number one. How did we know Moses did not forget his people while he lived in the king's palace? He visited the Israelites. Number two, what wrong did Moses do when he tried to help one of his people? He killed a cruel taskmaker. Number three, why did Moses flee from Egypt? He knew Pharaoh would try and kill him. Number four, what work did Moses do in the land of Midian? He was a shepherd. Number five, how many years did Moses spend in that country? Forty years. This week's memory verse is Proverbs chapter 28, verse 13. People who conceal their sins will not prosper, but if they confess and turn from them, they will receive mercy. Think about it. The new gorilla. A man was looking for a job, and he noticed that there was an opening at the local zoo. He inquired about the job and discovered that the zoo had a very unusual position that they wanted to fill. Apparently, their gorilla had died. And until they could get a new one, they needed someone to dress up in a gorilla suit and act like a gorilla for a few days. He was to just sit, eat, and sleep. His identity would be kept a secret, of course. Thanks to a very fine gorilla suit, no one would be the wiser. The zoo offered a good pay for this job, so the man decided to do it. He tried on the suit, and sure enough, he looked just like a gorilla. They pretended to sleep, but after a while, he got tired of sitting. So he walked around a little bit, jumped up and down, and tried a few gorilla noises. The people who were watching him seemed to really like that. When he would move or jump around, they would clap and cheer and throw peanuts at him. And the man loved peanuts. So he jumped around some more and tried climbing a tree. That seemed to really get the crowd excited. They threw more peanuts. Playing to the crowd, he grabbed a vine and swung from one side of the cage to the other. The people loved it and threw more peanuts. Wow, this is great, he thought. He swung higher and the crowd grew bigger. He continued to swing on the vine, getting higher and higher. And then all of a sudden, the vine broke. He swung up and out of the cage, landing in the lion's cage that was next door. He panicked. There was a huge lion not 20 feet away, and it looked very hungry. So the man in the gorilla suit started jumping up and down, screaming and yelling, Help! Help! Get me out of here! I'm not really a gorilla. I'm a man in a gorilla suit. Help! The lion quickly pounced on the man held him down and said, will you shut up? You're going to get both of us fired. Application. Sooner or later, we all get found out. Sooner or later, we all blow our cover. It is only a matter of time before who we are and what we really are becomes obvious to everyone. Any attempt to conceal our true nature will eventually be futile. In some stressful, off-guarded moment, who and what we are will surface. There is no point in pretending. Who we are and what we are, sooner or later, says scripture, will be declared from the rooftops. Our memory verse that applies today is Proverbs 28, 13. People who conceal their sins will not prosper, but if they confess and turn from them, they will receive mercy. Proverbs 28, 13. This concludes today's lesson.